Father, we thank you. We bless you for this evening. Speak to us, direct us in what you will. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's look at a scripture in Ezekiel chapter 22, 30. Ezekiel 22, 30. For I sought for a man among them that should take up, make up a hedge, or the, another word says a wall, and stand in the guard before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. There, I've seen things happen, and sometimes Christians wonder how it happened. But a lot of us don't understand, especially church people don't understand spirituality and how things work. Let me start with this. Before Eli would die, there was one person on earth who knew he would die. Before Eli would die, Eli himself did not know he would die, but Samuel knew it. God came to reveal to Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 3 and told him that Eli has done this, Eli has done that, Eli has done this, Eli has done that, so he will die, he will go to war, and this and this will happen. And when Eli saw Samuel in the morning, he asked him, what did God tell you? And his early told him that, don't be afraid. Just let me know. I've taught you this, that God will never do anything until he has revealed what he wants to do to his servant, the prophet. Now, in other words, sometimes the man of God might know. Sometimes the people around the man of God might know. We are in a generation where church has become give me. Everybody is praying for it themselves. God, give me this. God, give me that. Give me that. The only person who is praying for people is the pastor. This afternoon, I was telling two of my office staff that I am carrying your bedding, so I don't see why you should allow me to carry mine. You are my headache. So if you, you are my headache, I don't see why I should still have certain things as my own headache. You go to most of our churches, the prayer is all those who want to give birth, all those who want to marry. You never, you never, you, if you go to church and you start raising prayer for the church or the pastor, most of the congregation will not pray. I they pray, oh Lord, I pray for Reverend F.D. Yale, that Lord, you sustain him, Lord, you, you should know that Lord, my life is not going well. Oh Lord, the, the prayer has changed, but you will never hear that the prayer has changed. I don't know if you have done that before. Be frank. God bless you. Because we are a selfish generation. One day, this man called Peter, Acts chapter 12, nearly died prematurely. James was killed. God didn't say anything. They, they cut his head off. Acts chapter 12. And they arrested Peter, and Peter chose to die. Peter was put in prison, and the king was waiting for um, after the Easter to execute him. And instead of Peter himself praying, he was sleeping. In other words, there are times that men of God get tired of life and they want to go. But if you read your Bible very well, the church, verse 5 will tell you that, and the church made prayer. It's not Peter who, Peter doesn't want to pray. He, he's lying in prison. James is gone. Who is next? I'm, I don't care. Because there comes a time when Paul said to live is Christ and to die is gain. What does it mean that to live is Christ and to die is gain? This is the meaning. If I'm alive, I'm alive because Christ, 
Because of Christ. But if I die, that is when I, Paul, I will gain. Because if you're a man of God and God opens to you, your heavenly realm, your heavenly realm, where you are going to be, where there will not be insult, what you've not done, they say you've done, all this wahala, you will be happy to leave this world and go and rest. Many people who had visions and dreams that they went to heaven, the only people who wanted to come back on earth were people who, when they had a dream, they were going to hell. <laughs> All those who saw that they went to heaven and they saw God show them the place they are going to live and how their life was going to be, they begged that can they stay here? They said, no, your assignment on earth is not completed, so go and continue. Because when you see that realm, and the Bible says in Revelation 21 that at that place God shall wipe away all tears. There shall be no more sorrow, no more crying. For the former things have passed away. You don't have any business on earth again. Anybody who has encountered the heavenly doesn't want anything to do on earth. So sometimes, men of God sometimes chose, choose to die. Men of God sometimes choose to die because the truth is that what is your essence on earth? One day, a friend of mine died. He was buried last year. He fell sick for about... He's a man of God with a mega church in Accra here. When he died, I don't go into what, he fell sick for about two to five years. When he died, I went to visit the family and I met church members in the house who were crying. You know what one of them told me? <laughs> who will pay my fees? When you see church members crying when a pastor is dead, find out exactly why they are crying. A lot of the time, it is selfish what they will not be gaining again now that the man is gone. Not that they want the man alive. <laughs> but the truth is that how many of them ever stood to pray and fast that this man is the reason why my life is going on. So let me preserve this man, if not for anybody, for myself. I like the way you are quiet already. Here is Peter. Put between four quaternions of soldiers. In other words, 16 soldiers. And their duty was to guard this man so that Sunday morning, the week, uh, Monday by Monday, let's say it's Friday, so they are waiting for Monday to kill him. And Peter is he's like a senior pastor. He's sleeping. <laughs> he's sleeping comfortably in prison. Why? He has seen his master Jesus die on the cross. So dying is not something most great men of God who have encountered God, they don't fear death. They don't fear death. Especially if you feel your assignment on earth is done. You don't fear death. Because if your assignment on earth is done, most of the things you do is a repeat. It's just a repeat. And somebody says, men of God die early. Jesus died 33 and a half years. <laughs> Jesus died 33 and a half years. How many years? After being in how many years of ministry? Three and a half years of ministry. And his assignment was done. Now, when Peter was kept in prison, why did the church pray? You know, sometimes people who take care of us, they go through things because of us. And we too, we add it, our own wahala to it. So, a man of God is determined that brother A or sister A will succeed no matter what. And because the man of God has decided that this person will succeed no matter what, the demons in your house don't mind you. They are, they are no more interested in you. The interest is instead in the one that you are listening to. Because if the person is not there, 
they can have access back to you. You too, when you go into prayer, you are praying for you. So that you become powerful. Powerful to do what? Most great men of God that had longevity in ministry stayed long. The secret behind it is that they had personal intercessors and prayer warriors who were praying for them 24-7. And as I said earlier, Eli was deemed dead spiritually. His obituary was written for Samuel. Someone knew it. I stayed, my mother is a pastor, and I stayed at least at least 20 to 22 years of my life with my mom. And one of the things, Pastor David is aware of this. Pastor Victor too stayed with us a bit. At least Pastor David is more aware. One of the things my mom will do to you every morning when he sees your face is ask you, what dream did you get? And I used to hate it. Because my mom will ask you, what dream did you get? Because she understood spiritually is that what he, she would not see. Somebody close is likely to see. And when the person sees it, sometimes the person even doesn't understand what he sees. So you, Samuel, when God spoke to you, Samuel, Samuel, you thought it was early. You didn't even understand what you do. It took a man of God to tell you what you do. The Bible will tell you that somebody didn't reveal the full detail. He revealed an aspect to Eli. Well, the main reason why God decided that Eli would die was because his children were misbehaving in the temple. Because he was not correcting them. When they misbehaved, he was pampering them. He was not telling them that what they, one of the things, if you know about me, people who are very close to me, I'm very papa on them. Because when you are a man of God and you are not accurate in dealing with the people who are very close to you, God can take you away. So we say that, and because I'm close to you, are very other people, other people I can cool down on them, but not you. That is some of the disadvantages of being too close. Because when you are very close, the next thing you will see is that God has the ability to reveal certain things about the man of God. Let me tell you this: anytime a man of God decides to help you, you can be one of the channels that God or Satan will use to inform. Why did the church pray? Every great man of God has desired death in one way or the other before. Moses told God, kill me here. Kill me here. I don't want to go further. And God said, what's your problem? He said, the ministry burden is too much for me. And God said, okay, look for 70 people and let them carry the burden with you. So Moses had longevity because he had 70 people who were carrying the weight of the ministry with him. His spiritual, I might teach you something here. His spiritual director or mentor in Exodus chapter 18. I don't have no so. Because this thing I know, even though I was just told to teach it. His spiritual mentor in Exodus chapter 18 called Moses for a meeting. Moses, what is your problem? He said, I sit down from morning till evening. And they both come to me and they consult me on what your problem is. And I tell them what they should do. And um, Jethro told him, Moses, the thing which you are doing is not good. You will worry yourself and you will die prematurely. So look for people who are capable so they can handle this burden with you. And Moses didn't really listen to it until he went to God and he was complaining that I want to die. Now when ministry when ministry begins to expand the likelihood that your pastor will die early is big. Let me tell you how. Your ministry is small. Let's take it that 
when they throw arrow of death, pastor say, return to sender. Hey, return to, he's fighting for you. When the ministry has become bigger and more arrows are coming, who is fighting to take those some of the arrows for the man of God? And sometimes the one the man of God is taking the arrow for is the one who is backbiting and insulting the man of God. Today you are quiet. Oh. I said the title of my message is what? Don't kill your pastor. <laughs> Bring the place that the thing you are doing is not good. You worry yourself and the people. Now, most often, most often, give me verse. Okay, let's read. Moses' father in law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. 18. Thou will surely wear away. You will wear away. Both thou and his, these people. That is with thee. For the tin is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to what? Perform it thyself alone. It will kill you. So ministry is expanding. The enemy throws blood pressure. Pastor collect them. Members are free. The enemy throws arrow of suicide. So, and when you, you are a pastor and you collect arm, what happens is that you psychologically, bodily, spiritually go through it and you deal with it as a spiritual man. And if you overcome it, that therefore means that your people are free. That is what Jesus, um, God said, I sought for a man to make a wall. Listen on. Read Read the, the Ezekiel 22.30, the New King James or NLT. I sought for a man to make a wall. If you make a wall, what it simply means is that if anybody throws anything, it hits the wall. It doesn't hit the person. Okay, let's read. Go. This is God saying, So I sought for a man among them who will make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. So when it's a wall, what happens is that when the arrows of evil or whatever are thrown, the wall collects it. Are, are you getting me? And that brings relief to leadership. So if you know men of God like Ora Roberts and those men of God who stayed live very long, if you go into their history, they had what we call intercessors, which today we call them uh, armor bearers, who were just in the strong room. What we were doing was interceding for the man. Did Peter know that people were praying for him? No. What was with him? He was snoring to death. After all, if he dies, who loses? And he's going to Christ. What for Jesus? He has not seen Jesus in the flesh for a long time. He longs to be with him. Now watch this thing in the world where people, now that the man of God is dead and gone, who is crying? Now do you know how many people will lose their jobs? Do you know how many people could also die? Do you know how many people are going to suffer? Do you know now some fetish priests are even coming now to say that they killed him. Yeah, our uncle Kubun Sam has come out to say he went to kill him. <laughs> because it was a battle between the two of them. <laughs> and let, let me tell you, Christians should stop the hypocrisy tears. Those tears should have been shed when the man was alive. In intercession. Look, when is somebody's an intercessor? It's like what Jesus did on the cross. Look, even before the cross, Jesus is working with his disciples. The Pharisees say, "This your disciples. They are, they they don't live holy. They 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 don't even wash their hands, and they eat." Look at Jesus. He's, he's an intercessor, and he defends them. He said, "What enters into a man doesn't make the person sin." Is what comes out. Meanwhile, behind it, he said, You put next and wash your hands. (laughs) 
they go to a place like Zacchaeus' house. They did a party. Peter finishes the plate. Every food they give these people, they don't say, we are okay. They finish it. So they came to Jesus and said, your people, they don't fast. They love food. He says, and they don't fast. John the Baptist disciples, they fasted. He says, as long as I am with them, they don't need to fast. When I go, they will fast. Meanwhile, later he told them, this kind, it doesn't go. Except by prayer and fasting. Sometimes a pastor can defend church members with their life. A church member sees a pastor in trouble. They say, we knew it all along. You are going to. Don't kill your pastor. Look at someone say, a pastor is saying, don't kill the pastor. Now, one of the things you have to do as a member is if you ask yourself that, so if my pastor should die, what will I lose? Well, if you lose nothing, don't pray. Someone say, ah, look, one day, say one day. There was a demon that came to fight Israel 40 days and 40 nights. His name was called Goliath. We all know the story. And all that Goliath was looking for is that the whole of Israel, let's say the church, one person should come and fight. He doesn't care whether it is the king or anybody. Of course, when nobody will go, who should go? It will be the king. When nobody will fight, it's the king who has to fight. So, God, if a church is rising and the enemy decides to attack the church, the enemy will want somebody to stand in the gap. We say, I'm not going to. And sometimes you'll be there and you say, God keeps showing you a certain thing in a vision. A certain thing in a vision. You can easily say that the day it happens, yeah, this church will suffer. Out. But you were supposed to. If God didn't show it for you to even talk and discuss it. He showed it to you for you to what? Stand in the gap. It's like me. I'm there and I see that there's an attack coming on you. I call you. And I tell you, walk this way. Take this path. Do this and do that. Come and let me pray for you. I've had so many occasions where we have church members who went to pray somewhere and they're under attack and they came. When they can just look at them, I give them a hug. I say, go. And they said, that is gone. And they went. And in the night, me and the demon had to banter. They were enjoying their life. You see, it's like, it's like let me give an example. It's like, um, I don't know how, you see, there is fire and there's fire. So, when, let's say, the, a fire of a match is burning and you have a thick cloth, which is bigger, you can put it on it. What do that do? It will kill the fire, right? In that same way, to that same fire, if you have small cloth and you put it on it, it will burn it. So, sometimes a demonic attack that comes against a man, to you, it is dangerous. But to the level of the man of God, it is nothing. It can be quenched. So it is quenched for you. You, you go. You say, this man of God is powerful. He has taken bullets. He's a soldier man. It is now that he must go into the stronghold and start dealing with it, contend with it. Now the thing goes. And sometimes what the enemy does is that as long as you are related, you are associated, you are connected to the commission and the mission, that demon gives you peace of mind because you are under the covering. So the best they can do for you is to let you leave the church or leave the place, then they can re-attack you. Until then, as long as he has he, the demon or principality has been defeated, that demon or principality will wait at the junction, at the opportune time to grab you are quiet. Am I talking to somebody at all? There is no marriage in your family. The pastor says you are getting married. The next thing the demons in your family say that, hey. So the next thing you realize is that your pastor is facing marital challenges. <laughs> so look at the whole pastor going through all this thing. <laughs> you forgot it that it is your challenge that he's facing to overcome for you. The Bible said God is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Every intercessor must feel what the people. This is a amount of prayer. So let me teach you. Every intercessor must feel what the people feel to be able to address their issue. How? God was in heaven. 
any time man since you die, true of us. The day God became a man and lived like a man, his judgment changed. Because when you go through what people go through, your understanding about what to do with issues also changes. So one day, David fought Goliath. We all know the story, right? David fought what? Yeah. And Saul became a free person. Aside that, too, Saul was also being tormented by an evil spirit. And the only thing David needed to do, another one, is to stand in the gap by doing what? Playing his music. And the more he plays the music, the more King Saul was relieved. What does he mean? So you realize that Saul's ability to live long was also predetermined by his association with David. And you never find anywhere in the Bible that you see that David wrote, if not for me, Saul would have died early. Yeah, the way me, I was a male, my personal. Whenever that his demon came, and I would say, Ajibra, 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 he could. I'm the only one who knows how to call him that. Intercessors don't reveal what goes on behind the scenes. An intercessor is like a secret agent. Am I teaching well here? You are, you, are, you are lost. So, fast forward. Goliath was a giant. But Goliath also had brothers, sisters, and cousins and nephews. David too has become an old man. One day, he takes his spear and arrow, bow, javelin, he and his mighty men, pa, 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 they are fighting. Then they met a guy called Ishbosheth, who had six fingers and six toes. The guy gave David a blow. Bam! He said, you, you kill my brother. I have waited for this day. Then the mighty men of David came in. Pulled David away and said, David, move. People, take David home. And the mighty men fought for David. And they told David, from today, you will not go to battle with us. Because you are the light of Israel. If you die, we are done. Oh, can I have that scripture? Let's read before you tell me that you, you kick your head inside, you tell our stories. Let's read. And there was a, yet a battle in God where there was a great a man of great stature. He had what? Every hand what? And on every foot what? Four and twenty in number and was also born to be the giant. Give me NLT. Now, please. So, so, David could have died that day and would not have fulfilled his generation. What Acts said that David lived fulfilling his will for his generation. Let's read. In another battle, this one is easy to read. Let's read together. Where the Philistines at Gath day. And do you remember Gath? Where David and Goliath. Okay, go. They what? Encountered a huge man with what? Six fingers uh -huh, and six toes on each foot. Twenty-four in all. So six, 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 twelve. Twelve. Who was also a descendant of the giants? The next one. Go. That's your, uh -huh. But when he he, he, he defied and turned to Israel. He was killed by Jonathan, the son of all, David's brother, Shimea. Somebody killed him. Now, I want you to look for where they told him that David will never go to battle again. David, you won't you go with us again. So sometimes you ask yourself, so were there people, are there people in church who can see that their pastor's life is at risk? And that pastor is the light of their life. So let me fight. Who are you doing 21 days fast? I'm doing for my pastor. Hey, you, you do 21 days fasting for yourself. Let me tell you this. No matter the water that comes into wager, 
it can never become a dam. Wager must submit his water tributaries to Akosombo to be able to produce enough power for everybody. So sometimes people spend time praying. God. When all you needed to do was to pray for the man who if the person is to break through, you are also going to succeed. So David could have died prematurely. Was he anointed? Yes. Was he a man of God? Yes. Once again, the Philistines were at war with Israel. And David and his men were in the thick of the battle. David became weak and exhausted. You see, the capacity of David at 17 is not the same as 44. Let me give you an example. You have a church. Membership is 500. You have a church. Membership is 20,000. Master, please, don't compare it that way. 500, at least you are fighting 200 demons. <laughs> but 20,000. You do your own calculation. If 40% for each. And that is why Peter said in the early times that I don't change the scripture in Acts chapter 6 <coughs> that you, I'm not going to get my vo- myself involved in sharing food and uh, who has a problem, yes and next, counseling <laughs> Peter said I'm not going to be involved in counseling and sitting down and solving marital issues, leave it for the deacons I want to concentrate on what? Prayer and the study of the word. Once again, the Philistines went at war with Israel and David and his men were but he became weak and exhausted. Again, similar to what Peter did. But look at it. The next verse. Each burn not uh-huh, was a descendant of the giants. This is another person. His bronze spearhead weighed more than seven pounds. And he was armed with a new sword. David, you took Goliath's old sword. This one is a new one. Yours is outmoded. New, this is the latest android. When, when witches are going high tech, you say what? Look, let me tell you this. I'll, I'll move on. Let me tell you this. Sure. In the social world, man, the rules of engagement are so many. Look, God tells his prophet to tell them, this, you win this war. They are winning. And the king, who understands spiritual things, takes his first son and smashes him to the wall. And his first son dies. God said, mm, I said you win, but you are against him. Because you, you sacrifice goat and sheep. This person has sacrificed his firstborn son who will reign in his stead. Come on. If you give me something that costs you, it has cost him his kingdom. He wins the war. God, excuse me, I thought I was your best friend. Somebody's, I said that when Kotoko and Hassa are playing football, they all do juju. But the ones who juju is higher. Somebody kills 20 cows. You bring goat too. And you, you expect equal judgment. That, and the Fetish priest won't tell you that your brother brought this. So when you come, say, uh, what do you want? Oh, uh, I want to win the match. Okay, so what do you want? The, this, how much do you want? Two nil. Two nil? Okay. Okay, two nil. Each goal is 10 cows. Two nil, 10 cows. Okay, two. And that person comes, how much do you want? You want to win two nil? Hey. Two nil is 10 cows. 10 cows. So you. I'll give you 10 cows, 20 cows, but I'll dash you 5 cows in addition so that that one you will chop. The 20 is for the gods. <laughs> That's when your goalkeeper will get the ball. <laughs> Did you see, you see that goalkeeper? <laughs> what? That's what you see that chair. Levels there. God said, You you 
sacrifice goat and sheep. This guy has brought his first son, who ran in his head. God, Israel had to run away. As if God was not with them. Israel ran away. There are lots of things in the spiritual realm that people don't understand. No. And sometimes when ministry is expanding, this one is your attention. This one is, the man of God is not even having time to pray. Huh? This man of God I'm talking about, you can see him on TV carrying bags of rice. And say, he's so humble. He should be praying, not carrying bags of rice. See him going distributing food. It's good, very humble. And people are there crying. Why should you cry now? Let me tell you, you can go and do 40 days dry fasting to get an anointing. A man of God can just say, receive it. From that day, you are anointed. You don't need 40 days. From that day, you are anointed. <laughs> this guy, he was armed with a new sword. He cornered David. And was about to, you know what is cornered David? Come. <laughs> see, see, this is cornered David. Corner. Oh no, another one. It's when you get to pump up and boxing it, you put the person in the rest in the corner. So the guy is not. So the people were like, say, David went to him, I'm not, you know. <laughs> Because... Hey, is this the same David that killed Goliath? Yes. Is he still anointed? Yes. But after killing Bakono, each boy said, killing Goliath. This one is another level. This guy came with a new sword. So you realize that when David's sword hit the guy's sword, David's sword was through it. <laughs> David said, In Jesus' name, he said, Come on, come on. See? The demon had, he too has gone to fortify himself. Had really studied how this person lives, how this person works. And I'm sure David had told them that will leave you for me. This is my battle. No, I killed Goliath, man. I killed all these people. Leave you. you fight those other people. I'm a giant specialist. For they realize. They have thrown David cancer. They have thrown David some incurable disease. The giant has come. He cornered David and was about to kill him. Let's read on. But Abishai, may God give us people like that in church, of Zuria came to David's rescue and killed the Philistine. One man. I'm telling you, people killed their pastors. Then David's men declared, you are not going out to battle with us again. Why risk snuffing out the light of Israel? In other words, if you, in other words, if you go, the whole Ghana will be doomed. No doom so. No light will work again. We will not have tomorrow. We don't know how our future is going to be like. So from today, no more battle for you. Give us battle strategies. Tell us how to fight. We will fight. Stay and do the work of a king. You see, don't be too excited when you have a pastor who is jack of all trades. Back to Exodus 18. When you do that, you die early. Elijah. Elijah. I don't know if you know Elijah. The mighty man of God. Told God, 
kill me. I want to die. He went to God and said, God, I want to die. And when, First Kings 19, when he said to God he wanted to die, he told his servant, oh God, make you not follow me again. He behaved and fired his servant. And his servant was so stupid, forgive me. He left him. I've seen men of God who, there's a church, I don't mention his name, now pastored by Pastor Paula White. There's a church. The man was powerful, TBN. I used to watch him. The man of God, after one ministration, said he wants to be alone. Nobody should be around him. So he went to hire a hotel, the most precious hotel in town. Stayed in. They waited one week, two weeks. The man of God was not coming. So one day they would knock. He was not open. They opened the door. The man was dead. He had sniffed cocaine. He used to be a drug addict and then he became born again. But the weariness, he was having some divorce issues be and he can't tell anybody. He snuffed cocaine and died. They came to meet him with cocaine all over. And I was listening to him. I went down, I'll send it to you if you're interested. A message by Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. And he said, he asked his armor bearers, where were you? Or so, a bomb by Uncle Pierre Windows, who said, then I was. If David had died, the people would do like what people are doing. Hey, he's gone. You killed him. Those who did not stand in the gap to intercede. Elijah's servant left him alone. The man went to God and said, kill me. God came to him and said, and then he came to him, what are you doing under this juniper tree? He said, Cry, Jezebel is after me. And he said, ah, where's your servant? I left him far away. I've run. I left him. God decided, let me give you a servant who is a hard follower. So what the Bible said, an angel fed Elijah with food that would last him for 40 days and 40 nights. Twice. Then he went and went to look for Elijah. Elisha. And if you read the Bible very well, any time Elijah, if we read 2 Kings chapter, this one is 2 Kings chapter 2. Any time Elijah would tell Elisha, don't follow me. I say, don't follow me. <laughs> the guy looked at his face. As the Lord lives, and as you live, I'm following. It happened at Bethel. It happened at Jericho. It happened at um, Giga. It happened at Jordan. Four times. And these four times, it happened in a space of 20 years. When you read it in First Kings two, Second Kings two, it looks like it's one day matter. No, 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 no. It's about twenty years span. And anywhere that man said, yeah, "You are not going to say you are going." And when they wanted to know what did Elisha do for Elijah, they said, "This is the man that poured water on the hands of Elijah." But he also told God, "This is, it comes to a time where the men of God themselves they want to go." Moses wanted to go. Elijah wanted to. Elijah wanted to go. When Elijah didn't want to go, he died of fever. And Sunday, I'm not sure you on Sunday. I was telling you, he died of fever. Elijah knew the realms so well. If you know, if I say he knows the realms so well, this is a guy who an army, Second Kings chapter six, an army attacks him, and they come to wake him up, and they tell his servant that. What is the problem? He says that we have been surrounded by an army to kill us. I said, no, don't worry, go and sleep. He said, ah, master, how can we go and sleep? The servant said, no, we can't sleep like that. There's something wrong. He said, go and sleep. Then he said, the people want to kill us. Then Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes. Second Kings chapter 6. And when his eyes got opened, he saw the angels with sword who were surrounded by the people. And Elijah said, go blind. You know the attacks, men. What was the problem that a whole army was released to come and kill one man? You know why they wanted to kill Elisha? The problem was simple. The king sat in his palace. This is a Syrian king. And he decides that he's going to attack Israel. Listen to the problem. And whenever he says to attack Israel, the prophet will call the king and say, today, eh, don't pass here. They have laid ambush for you. Don't pass there. And when he says another trap, 
Elisha will call the king and say, don't pass here. So one day the king called all his soldiers at a um, cabinet meeting and said, all of you please, so who among us here? Anytime we make a plan to when we go for witches meeting, when we go for a meeting to destroy this person, who goes to tell the king so that he doesn't fall into it? He said, there is nobody here. But there's a prophet in Israel called Elisha. And they said, eh, let us go for him. So even the man of God seeing and directing you is a reason why witches want him dead. For the skills that he was revealing. What is his offense? He's not done anything against you. The only thing he has done was just to protect his jurisdiction. So he cannot have access in. Am I teaching here? Because I'm saying, are you killing the pastor? And the funny thing is when the pastor had made certain vows. Let me explain it well. The dangerous part. Like the pastor may say, I want you to understand. Nobody in bridge will die. That's a vow. In other words, if anything happens to you, the man of God's ministry is in trouble. So what the enemy does is that you, the one who is coming to church, you will start misbehaving and the, so that the witches and wizards will get you. And because the pastor doesn't want anything to happen to you, when they throw the blow, the pastor will go and collect it so that you leave. When the pastor collects it and the pastor finds it, one morning the pastor comes to church this sickness here, the pastor is suffering. It was your blow. So, this one here, this one, pastor didn't do well. I'm so born of the spiritual realm. They defeated him. Then you are also insulting him somewhere. The more you insult him or disrespect him, the more when he at, you see the truth is that when a pastor is covering you and let's say the pastor is emotionally attached to you you disrespect him you abuse him you are not faithful to him in things like your tithe your offering the pastor suffers to help you more the energy he will use he needs more energy to help you Let me ask you a question. How many of you have stayed in a single room before? Single room electricity bill. And then five bedroom electricity bill. Are they the same? It takes more power when you improve. So even as the church members improve, they take in a lot of... Look, let me tell you this. Uh, Sunday, I was telling you that the power inside a man of God, when it depreciates, the man of God becomes very vulnerable. One day, Jesus is walking. He has only one agenda. He has put in enough power in the system to raise a dead body. Jairus child. That was what he was going to do. So he knows the power he has accumulated for that occasion. As he was going, he stands and says, Peter, Jesus, what is it? Jesus, hey, what is this? Jesus said, power has left him. My power has dropped. So, ah, Jesus. Power. Power. Where's the power? He said, somebody has touched me. You know why Jesus will know that somebody has touched him? Because any touch you have spiritual is a transaction. Any touch is a transaction. You see, when I lay hands on you, you are sick. What happens is that the sickness will come to me and health will come to you. And a sickness, you have to battle the one who laid hands on you. And if he can't fight you, then it goes. And sometimes, if he can't fight you, it looks for people who are close to you. Because, you see, 
if you read the Bible very well, demons like territories. They don't like to go away from their territory. Are you here? You going somewhere? So Jesus realized that he bought fifty thousand worth of ECG in the morning. As he was just walking, it has dropped to twenty-five. Somebody has plucked electric cooker. This one is not mobile phone. Peter, so it's me who's charging. I said this one is not mobile phone charging. The way the power has dropped. Then a woman came and said that, oh, it is me. Now, wait a minute. Until the woman came to attest that it is me, Jesus was not comfortable. Because let me tell you this. One of the things that kills men of God is spirit of not being appreciating and unthankfulness. Ungratefulness. And valuing the potency. As soon as the woman came and said, it is me, and I got healed. He said, your faith has made you well. Then he went on. Now he has a reason to continue. Go to Jairus has raised the dead. Read your Bible. After he went and prayed, spent time refueling. Sometimes all the congregation needs a soft food deliver. All night. All night. Preach on. Hey, today church was powerful. Everybody was under the power of God. As people are falling down, your power is reducing. As people are receiving impartation, you are dropping. As more testimonies are happening, you are dropping. And it gets to a stage where, let me tell you this, prophetically, every pastor is supposed to manage 100. Every pastor is supposed to manage what? 100. Centurion, 100. A man had 100 sheep and one God missing. Every shepherd is supposed to manage 100. So when you have a church of, let's say, 20,000, and there's one shepherd, and everybody is looking up to the shepherd, you should realize that that shepherd needs, that pastor needs a lot of lieutenants. So if you have a church of, let's say, 20,000, and... One is to hundred. Please do your mathematics. How many associates do you need? I didn't hear you. Two thousand. Let's imagine the hundred of them resign one day. They leave the church. What it means is that there's going to be an overlap. Spiritually. So sometimes when that thing happens, before you realize, this associate pastor is sick. This person is having this attack. This person is having this attack. And when it happens, the, the leader must begin to now bring in more reinforcement, more intercession, more prayer. We should do this fasting. We should do this. And you're like, ah, this thing I'm saying, we are doing so many fasting. You don't understand why we are doing all this because our capacity has increased. But you have not built the infrastructure to hold the capacity. One of the things we've done this year, and some of you stopped, is when we declared that every month we are fasting. Some of you, last month you didn't do. Last two months you didn't do. You only did January, February, March. April, May, you don't do. And you are happy you didn't do it. Somebody calls me, I'm sick. I said, sleep. When you get up, call me. He calls me or she calls me. He said, Pastor, it's gone. When I woke up, you don't know what took place when you went to sleep. I realized something. And last, my office staff look at it. Anytime I'm not comfortable in my body, I feel sick in a way. If I call, anybody who has that sickness come to church and they both come and stand here, I pray for them. They say they are healed. I go to the office, I'm healed. Because what is happening is that you are standing in the gap. You are a wall. Church members of today, they don't pray for their pastor. And when they say that, pray for your pastor, he's a light. You say, 
we are all light. Or is it true? It's not true. We are all light. We are all light. You see, politicians, they pick candidates and they campaign for the candidate as if their life depends on the candidate on the hope that when the candidate becomes president, they will be given ambassador, minister. If not for them, anybody in their family. Is it true or true? When you do the same for your pastor, they say you are a fool. Huh? Why would you die for a man of God? And some, I have some people who told me that if you say you are very anointed, why me I, to be God be the glory? Even it's not good, but I'm managing. I don't have a driver. I don't have. Have you seen me bodyguard before? But let me tell you, it's very important. You know, recently, France, their president, they, they, they have given me a slap. Wah! You say, oh, Africa, we like bodyguard too much. You go without bodyguard. Next time, it will be a bomb. You know why Africa we need bodyguards so much? Because the hatred is high. The envy is high. You, you make it small. Somebody doesn't understand why you are making it. In Europe, if you are making it, they say oh, it's hard work. In Africa, if you are making it, it is juju. Or you are cheating me. In Europe, somebody will usually come and say, I want to talk to you. You know why he wants to talk to you? He wants you to tell him or her how you made it. But here, they say, where you pass? <laughs> 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 is it true or is it not true? Why so it's the grace of God? Say, we all know it's the grace of God, but you, uh, you, you, you tell me the reality. <laughs> Let me read your Bible very well. In the days of Jesus, eh? in the days of Jesus, I'm talking about protecting your light. I've I'll, I'll, I'll preached it a bit before. If you go to my Amazon page, I have a book there called Deliver Your Deliverer. Do you know they poke him to arrest Jesus? Do you know they poke him to arrest Jesus? They were temple bodyguards. They were who? They were who? They were who? They were temple guards. Read, let them Google it or check your Bible. Temple guards. Now, even in the old days, that if you touch the ark, you die. You understand me? Are you, are you here with me? In the olden days, that God opened the people die. They had temple guards. And these days of mercy and grace. Solomon's house. Read your Bible. The secret in Solomon's house. It included lion. Abraham, the father of faith, he had 318 soldiers protecting him. How many? Okay. When the temple guard returned without having arrested Jesus, the leading priest and so there were temple guards. What is the temple guard doing? There's a lot of places. This is not even when they arrested him, but if you go to arrest place, there were temple guards. So even in the old testament, there were guards. In Luke 22, look for it for me. When Jesus was about to leave, he told the disciples that when I sent you to go without purse. Did you lack money? He said, oh, we didn't lack money. When I sent you, did any attack come? He said, no. He said, but I told you not to go with source, right? He said, I'm going. People will hate you. If you have money, if you have a bag, a cloth, sell it and buy sword. This is Jesus. He told the disciples that, listen, buy yourself a sword. He said, sell. Go and do this. Sell what you have and go and buy a sword because people will not like you. Because I'm going. He said, Me, when I'm with you, there was a kind of protection we have, you know. But as I go, okay.
Okay, read. Okay, go up first. Then Jesus asked them, everybody, let's read together before you say it is me. Go. When I sent you out to preach the good news and you did not have money, a traveler's bag of extra clothing, did you do anything? No, they replied. Everything was supplied. But you see, Jesus knows when the gospel will be wicked against the church. Now he said, but now the rules have changed. He said, take your money and a traveler's bag. <laughs> if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. You are a man of God. You have security around you. Some physical demons must be dealt with physically. They will hide under the disguise of. Oh, Pastor, how are you? How are you? Better than your boss. I said, ah, God, where were you? God said, you didn't use wisdom. I told Peter them they should have source. Where is your own? One day, I've seen it at this, this I've seen it about two or three times in a, in a church. And me, myself, I've never seen some before. Where a person either takes our book or our sticker and Somebody came to their house to come and steal. And when the person saw the book or the sticker, the person slept, the arm robber, slept till morning. And when they came, they woke the person up and said, hey, what are you doing here? For the person's eyes opened. But thieves has come to my house to steal and they didn't sleep. <laughs> and you wonder, ah, me, they didn't sleep. By you, your house, because you, pastor, you are praying for God, protect them. God, guide them. Lord, no bad news. Lord, let everything in their house go well. And who is praying for the pastor? T Bishop T.D. just has a message titled, Feed What Feeds You. What's, what, did, what is the title? Feed What Feeds You. And that is the law of reciprocity. Anything that feeds you, if you don't feed it, it will cease feeding you. Now look at the church members. <laughs> Master is gone. And unfortunately, this man dies Saturday night to Sunday morning. People had slept. In the morning, they've taken their Bible to their God miracle for me. They are going to church. They go, the man of God is not there. How many of you spend this Saturday night, Tuesday evening, praying for your pastor? You are quiet, oh. Aaron and Miriam, Israel, in several occasions, God got angry with the people. In the Exodus 32, God said, Moses, give me, I want to kill them so that I'll start something new with you. Give me space. I'll have to kill them. They are not obeying my rules. When we talk to them, they don't listen. Moses told God, 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 don't do that. You repent. And God, I'll still do it. Then Moses said, okay, if you still want to kill them, kill me first. Me too, I won't do your work. Read your Bible. Kill me. Then God repented of the evil. Aaron and Miriam speak against Moses. God says, I'll finish them. They don't respect even me, I don't talk to you like that. How can they talk to you? And be careful when you're talking to a man of God. Expect the man of God who is covering you. And Moses goes to God and says, God, they, they are my family. You can't do anything that is to them. And God says, okay, you have heard you. But as for Miriam, he will suffer for seven days. At least he must learn a lesson. But I won't kill them. Moses go to strike rock. Twice. 
water comes, the people are drinking. Hey, Moses, you are powerful. Hey, Moses, you are powerful. As we are drinking, God says, you, you go to the promised land. You did what you wanted, not what I wanted. You have satisfied the membership. You've not satisfied me. A lot of the times, in the quest of the men of God trying to make the people happy, they make God unhappy. Man of God, so you are watching me to die. Man of God, won't you do anything? And this is a person who is fighting you spiritually. Bishop Dark said one day he had a dream. He's been having dreams every day that every Saturday to Sunday before he goes to church, he will see a person fighting with him, boxing. So in every dream, bah, 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 blow the person, person blows you. And every Sunday before he gets to church, he will have diarrhea. So one day, he prayed that God, who is this? God opened his eyes. It's a woman in the church who was fighting him. So Bishop, that asked the person to leave the church. Sometimes people are in the church as if they are for you, but they are one giving you blows. You are close to me. This day, today, what did you do for me? You iron my things, right? Good. So he ironed my things. That's very nice. If you, you go and stand somewhere to insult me, people will believe you. I bet you off. So let's take it that I got you angry. So you to go and stand somewhere and you have insulted me, God forbid. You know what you have done? It's not me you have fought on. You have destroyed the many people you misbehave towards. So, because of you, those people, now me too, I don't know, that they are angry with me. So, I pray God, bless them. I go, that thing is not working. Then they come to me, man of God, this, this, when you pray for me, it doesn't work. Ah. So, I say, God, if I'm a man of God, do it. God would do it because I put a notion that if I'm a man of God, the way he did it. But God knows that these people, he, they don't deserve any blessing. But because I said if I'm a man of God, God goes into my reservoir anointing, not what he has. I'm invoking my own altar and God will do it for them. So my tank is getting empty. People get results. So I'm not lying. The man who died, he could have prayed against it. He could have. But some of the things he was saying, everything shows that he knew he was going. But he didn't want to. He could have. And sometimes when you see people you have helped, protected, laid down your life for fighting you, you wish God would come and take you away. At least you didn't kill yourself. It's better for God to take you away than you drink poison. You say, how? Even you, when your guy leaves you, you want to die. <laughs> when your girl went to hug somebody, just hug somebody, you couldn't take it. You were having a heart attack. Then me, when I see that I raise you, that you have decided to be an associate pastor in somebody's church, and you say, me, I am fake. You think I should smile? When you take care of a lady, and one day the lady gets angry with you one day, and the lady goes to marry your best friend, we lose smile. And me, me try to raise you up, and next I realize that a church somewhere, you are the dickness. And you say, I should smile. I think I'm preaching power. Let me tell you more things that kill pastors. Frank, sorry I'm using you. Frank, okay, let me use Maurice more. Maurice has not been to church for a long time. Imagine 
Morris has friends. Morris doesn't introduce them to church. He doesn't bring them to church. Plenty, all of them do, I guess. He doesn't bring them to church. Please, are, are you listening to me? I say he doesn't do what? He doesn't bring them to church. And yet, that one day he won't do it. And yet, every Sunday, he keeps visiting those friends, their church. And then he puts it on his status. This church is powerful. And you go to Facebook and will never share life, bridge ministries, but we share other churches. And they will come and kneel and say, Pastor, I'm dying, pray for me. And the pastor is watching. If your mother sells Gary, and you go and buy your neighbor's Gary, which money should your mother use to pay your fees? I'm, I'm preaching you. You are sharing this one, sharing this one, saying, this pastor is powerful. You've never even said your pastor is good. You go to funeral because they made you chairman. You go to another church, they make you chairman of the, and the supporter. Say, Bridge, they, we don't do that. And they say, how much? 5,000. Supporters are giving 5,000. So you say, oh, me, I'll give 10,000 because I'm chairman. Then you come to church. Sometimes God opens my I see my, I saw a member of mine in the, a guy in a funeral. He went with Entourage and gave, first he said 15, in the album, 18,000. Take your seat. In the, I saw it all. And I, when I got up, I didn't tell him, I just said, bring me the title report. When I look at the person, he said, five cities, 10 cities. Then I went to the person's page on Facebook to watch. Come and see other pastors sharing. And the person will come to me and say, man of God, if I make it to you, you'll see it. So, like, because the person say, what is see? You see, just like, just like if you cook for your boy and he doesn't eat, but eat your friend's food. Then the person, you call the person, are you coming? Today, I don't feel like coming to your place. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. But he told me I will eat. Please, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. You see, when I was coming, I was so hungry, so there was this job, but I, I'm full. Let me tell you, next time, next time, when the person calls you, that, oh, General Vashia, Pastor, I've decided to come to church. You see, I have this problem. I know you can help me. You yourself, you not even pray. You not do anything. When the person can say, eh, okay, let's see what we can do. Why? Why didn't you pray? Why didn't you fast? Why didn't you prepare for the person? Because every time you cook, they don't eat. <laughs> it is service time. And you were in the house kissing. Smooching. And both of you are if not for church, you don't have met. <laughs> you met in church, oh. Uh-huh. You give me more volume, Kagra. You met in church. At least when you finish, bring us the offering. Because you, it was church time. You met in the, the person's house. So he saw meeting. I 
matter is what? Summit. You close church. I'm telling you, things that kill pastor. When you were in church, something funny happened in church which wasn't good. You were angry. You take, you take trotro. Sit at the back. First person. So you sit at the back. The trotro gets full. As you are going, you two of you church members, me would have the Mejayo bridge. Mejay, I stopped the church. This church, look at what happened in church. You are broadcasting to the whole people in the bus the danger of the church. The following Sunday, you are here because your heart is now cool. But the people you destroy the church to in the bus, they don't know that you are still in church. They go and spread their news that hey, I think I'm not preaching well. You sit in taxi, you sit in truck, and you gossip negative. Instead of you saying that, ah, were you in church to this message? It was easy. Pastor preached on how not to kill your pastor. And I'm sure if this man of God, you mention the name, the people notice. You see that? They put in the bus. You are choking them with the message. You are choking them with the message. When you get there, you say, ah, where do you go to church? They will ask you. Because they want to know you are a spreader of good news. So many of us, we are Christians, but our mouth spreads bad news than good news. And some of this, let me tell you this. When you, you don't understand some of these things, somebody, when, when I, I prophesied on a woman, hmm, and Pastor Tony took the video and gave it to her. She asked for it or something, I forgot. It. She said, Saturday, Friday, she met a woman of God, and the woman of God told her the same thing. Then she met another pastor who told her that she doesn't need to pray for her. He doesn't need to pray for her. He should go to his, he has a spiritual father, and that spiritual father is me, and that if he has me, he has no problem, everything. And he told the person that, but the church has become so big, so he doesn't think I have time for her. So that's why she's looking for help from other places. And the man said, No, ask for Reverend Yale. She has a list. And your name is in the list. So this man came two days ago, so ago with a fat envelope to come and see me. And I said, The prophet saw a list. But I me, mean, I don't have a list. The truth, I don't have a list. That's the truth. And she was like, Hey, so he said, I said, He's not lying. Let me tell you what the list is about. If I tell you to come and you come, go and you go, my spirit and your spirit has connection. So wherever you go, my spirit follows you. Jesus said, you, you love me. If you love me, you keep my commandments. And so as long as you are doing what I told you to do, the Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph. Why would the Lord be in Joseph in prison? Because while Joseph was in prison, he was still implementing what the Lord has told him. Now, as long as you are implementing this recovery, how do I know that some of my children are gossiping and they are talking against me or they are misbehaving? It's simple. How do I know? When in the dream I am chasing you to pray for you when you are running? <laughs> Or I can see that you are about to step into a pit. And I'll tell you, oh, what? I, move. So I'll move. Are you the one to take care of me? Get out. And you are insulting me in the dream. But physically, when you meet me, hey, man of God, I greet you. I know that, Master, it is face value Christianity. Inside you, something is not work. I have a lady in this church who left bridge about eight, ten years. No more than that. Her, 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 take your seat. Her son died. And by the grace of God, we, we wake the child from dead, when we're in Malam. He went to a church, and when he went to the church, a pastor was about to lay hands on her. And the pastor said, no, I can't lay hands on you. I said, why? He said, your pastor, are you going to bridge ministries every year? He said, he's standing here, he won't allow me to lay hands on you. He said, is he your, is he your pastor or your father? He said, I've not been to the church for years, but I still listen to him. He said, that man is covering you, go to him. So he, she came to me and said, why couldn't the man of God lay hands on her? 
I said, I don't know, but I, I knew, but I didn't want to say it. Years later, it came out that man of God was fake. And anybody he laid hands on, things got destroyed. His hands could not even, the pastor's hand could not even lay on the person. It's on record. Everybody is on record. Not those who have even are in church. Everybody who ever came to bridge or our fellowship called end time restoration from 1995 till date that still does what I told the people to do whether they left the church or not they are still succeeding they are still succeeding some of them have left the church when they see me oh how are you we talk we flow they are still succeeding because Jesus said the words I speak to you they are spirit and they are life my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your heart. For their life to those who find them and health to their flesh. In other words, the ability to find it is important. Oh, amen. amen. Now, the next thing. How do I know that a person, when I pray for you and it takes too long for you to have testimony spiritually, there is no connection. The connection is not correct. Because if it won't work, I'll tell you it won't work. If it will take time, I'll tell you it will take time. There are some people who come to me with a problem. And all I tell them is that, um, go. <laughs> like, you didn't pray. I said, go. Hearing it is enough. So let me end by this. Ask you a simple question. How will you cry if your pastor dies? Who pay my fees? Who pray for me? It's only when they die that you remember what they stood for in your life. But let me tell you, the devil doesn't fight you. He fights what you stand for. Who is covering you? Who is protecting you? Who is guiding you? In the Old Testament, when they went to war, like you know the David Goliath thing, they don't fight everybody. As soon as the king is dead, the battle is over. Read your Bible. As soon as the king is dead, the battle is over. Everybody becomes a subject. So when Ahab died, the battle was over. As soon as the king dies, when Saul died, the battle is over. So when they go to war, they don't, they were chasing, read your Bible, they were chasing um, um, Josaphat and Ahab were going to war. I don't want to go into that one. And what happened was that they swapped clothes. Ahab knew that all the prophecies means that he was going to die. And Josaphat was a good man of God in Judah. He was a good king. He was very fearful of God. So the king said, Ahab said to Josaphat, let's change our dresses. So when the battle was going, they were chasing Josephat. They were chasing Josephat. When they were about to kill Josephat, the Josephat removed his helmet and said, hey, please don't kill me. Or they look at him and say, ah, you you are a good king. They said, ah, so you are not Ahab. They stopped chasing him and they went to kill Ahab. When they killed Ahab, the battle was over. Because in the spiritual realm, the devil doesn't fight everybody. He doesn't. The devil is not, they, they are not too much. The devil can't multiply. The devil is one. There's one Satan. And Satan can be everywhere at the same time. So they don't have time to fight everybody. But they have time to fight the strong man. So Jesus was teaching in Luke 11. He said, when you enter the house, you must first bind the strong man. And when you bind the strong man, you will take away the goose. <laughs> you can't have the goose until you, have the, you bind the strong man. If you've not had a strong man, the goose are in peace. 
So now ask yourself this question. Who is the strong man of your life? Who is a strong man? Give me, you give me NKVG so that I become easy before we come to the NLT. Let's read together. Go. You give me the, you gave me the Matthew version. That's okay. Let's go. How can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he what? He first what? Binds the hood and then he will plunder his house. Now give me the NLT. Now I want to make it a compulsory thing in this church. At least more than 50% of the prayers prayed in this church must be for the church in the general of here. I don't even say amen. <laughs> Let's read. Let me, hey, bro, from the mood, where should you come back? Maybe you go. Let me illustrate this further. Who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man like Satan and plan his goods? Only someone with a stronger someone who could tie him up and then plunder his house. So who is the one that because of that, the witches and the wizards are not fighting you? When I was in school, there was this man of God. His name is Prophet Osetutu. He's now one of the powerful men of God in Takwadi. He was our senior. And my best friend was always going to ask you, the time will not come. Brother will take his Bible every day going to ask you. I was, he was my best friend. We're staying in Islam down together. And I was always convincing this guy that let's just go and clap and chase women and smoke and drink. He would try and preach me. He would preach me. He would preach me. Hey, for years old. He preached me for four years. I won't change it. You didn't change. Then, when we were in form four, our time we went to seven years school, not your home. The senior bishop was said to tonight, said, Bishop, left the school. The night he left the school, brother man came to me and said, I'll mention the how he called me. He called me by my school name. He said, hey. You were saying today, will you go? I said to them, I'm going to jet. He said, Can I come with you? I said, Why not? That day, that day that the guy left school, that night, my friend was in a club with me. The funny thing is that today, me, I'm a pastor, I'm born again. He's still in Australia. He's still not born again. Till date, his born again was because there was somebody in the school. And this guy, prophet, said, you know what we used to do? He's a guy who comes to the house. When he comes, you have to do something because he'll preach you. So me, when he comes, I always pick Tiro. Why go? I'm going to boo <laughs> Because I don't want this nonsense. Because he will preach you. Me? And the way he's so respected, the way he would do it, you, you can't shun him. So you have to find a diplomatic way of, you know, that kind of thing. So when you pick Tiro there, you know, that one, then, and, and, that one, no. And then time he comes, I take Tiro. And I'll do this. <laughs> That's how I escaped him. But this is my friend. The only thing that was keeping him from serving God, uh, uh, from serving Satan, was that man of God. Don't kill your pastor. Support your pastor. Pray for your pastor. Encourage your pastor. Not only me, sometimes when uh, the pastors preach, People send them a message. Your message was powerful. It blessed me. Don't keep it to yourself. The message blessed me. I was encouraged by it. I didn't know this, so, but when you preached it, I've now become sensitive to this area. Thank you very much for the message. You know what you are doing? You are encouraging the pastor. Because when even they f- we finish preaching and we go home and nobody has said anything, you wonder, did we do well? How many of you have been there before? You wonder, you are wondering what happened. Nobody has said anything. And that alone is a killer. You start singing a song like, This world is not my home, for I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the bloom. 
The angels back on me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If the world is not my home, then what shall I do? The angels back on me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Ba -dan -dan, ta -dan -dan, ta -dan -dan, ta -dan -dan. Say God, you want me here? Eh? It's if it's Sunday. Today when I preach, they won't mind me. God, let's go. You have money to support God's work. I put something on my status. Look at it. Reverend Easter never said it. People give money to their girlfriends. Political parties and they come and tell you they give too much to your pastor. You won't support pastor. Hey, yeah. Let's be on our feet. Me time and so. This is a deliverance message, oh. <laughs> Now, when somebody is talking to you about them, I didn't mention anybody's name, but you know the man of God who died. You can tell them that is the members who killed him. Oh, some members could have easily interceded and said we are not allowed. Somebody in the church knows about it. Someone in the church had vision. Now people are coming. God showed it to me. God showed. Shut up! This is not the time you tell us God showed it to you. What did you do about it? Someone got to know early will go. We should have done something about it. God shows you for you to work at it. God doesn't show you because he loves you. God showed Abraham about Lot because he wanted Lot to do something about it. God will not show an evil about a person, bad news about a person because he wants you to come to pass. If, if he shows it to you, it means he wants you to do something about it. <laughs> Lift your voice and begin to pray for your strong man. You know who the strong man is. If your strong man is somewhere else, you pray for the strong man. Some part of say that every Thursday I'm fight, fasting and praying because my pastor is born on Thursday. Most pastors like this song. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, let me stand. Lord, I am tired, I am weak, and I am warm. Through the storm. Lead me on to the light. Take my hands, precious Lord. Lead me on. Pray for your strong man. That's the second verse. Is there? Hear my cry. Hear my call. Hold my hand. Lest I fall. Please, Lord, take my hand. You are precious, Lord. Lead me home. Give me the best, the real. When the darkness, when the darkness appears, and the night draws near, and the day is past and gone. God 
guide my feet Hold my hand Take my hands Precious Lord Lead me home Listen Listen to me carefully here what did Jesus need from the disciples in the last hours of his life? It was simple. They should pray for him. They couldn't do it. So he had to pray for himself. He prayed until that shows the importance of the prayer he prayed for himself. Until there was no more water in him. He started his sweat was not like blood. Why? Because the people were supposed to intercede for him. Now he's dead. Judas, you are going to hang yourself. But you betrayed him. Peter, you are following him. Thinking how you can save him. But why didn't you pray? You didn't pray. You must lift up your leaders. Look, you might not even like someone like Nanado. Whether you like it or not, for the next three years he's our president. If you don't pray for him to get wisdom, the dollar would. <laughs> you don't like him, but his decisions are governing you. Prices of things are shooting through of us. You don't like him. Nigeria people, you don't like Buhari. He's still there. He has burnt you down. He has the power. I don't know if you start praying for your pastors. <laughs> I hope it's not a nine-day wonder. Lord, lead us, guide us. Raise an army of intercessors. Raise an army that will stand in the gap to pray for our leaders in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now hear me. The key is this. Whenever you pray for people, that's the fastest way their oil can drop on you. One day I'll talk on that. When you pray for people. <laughs> David did it for Saul. He became king. Joshua did it for Moses. He took over. Wisdom is the only person I've seen, Joshua, that wisdom was imparted to by laying on of hands. Maybe one day I'll tell you something. Listen to me carefully here. I taught some people, but let me share a little bit with you on this. Here is Moses. He has lifted up his hands, right? Who was winning? Joshua was winning. Exodus 17. He was winning. Then Moses' hands get tired. Why did everyone say, if yours is tired, I got to put yours down. I'll lift my own. Meet your half hands. And how? Two will say, me to I lift my hands. Your hand can never save the battle. What they all did was that they put away their hands and they came to lift up their hand. River, they joined their river to the river of Moses and Joshua was winning. What happens to most of us is that we don't want to lift up the hands of our leaders. We too, we want to lift our own hands. Your hand can save you. Your hand can save you. 